Hi, I'm Steve. In this video, I'm going to share with you a technique that I've been working on trying to make my epoxy inlays more realistic. So I'm batching out some hexagonal boxes and this is what I'm going to demonstrate how to achieve these results in a single epoxy pour on this uh, domed lid. Okay, the, the pigments I'm going to be using are this uh, Perlex emerald, color, emerald green color. Um, I think this is pearl white, russet red, silver, and carbon black. And what I like to have handy, and I, now that I'm doing this video, I'll probably ought to have it handy, is a a printed out picture of what I'm trying to simulate. So you'll see that there's no hard lines in, in most of this and I'm going to try the best I can to emulate these and uh, I'll just get, uh, get mixing. Um, I'm not going to show all the mixing. And this has, this epoxy has a working time of about oh, 30 to 40 minutes. So what I'm going to do now is, is take this sandwich stick with the black and I'm going to dribble it into the beak area first of all six boxes. Trying to keep as many air bubbles out as I can. And once I get the, uh, the beaks uh, filled with a black epoxy I'm going to come back to this area here and get the feet. And I think I'm pretty much there. Now what I'm going to do is come back and get the uh, tail feathers areas. I'm just going to get black in this area. Okay, so now from my photo, I don't know how well this camera, but the top of the head, you can tell that there's some black there. So I'm going to uh, spread some of this black around the top of the head. Okay, now what I'm going to do is Or my base color, the emerald green. And what I'm going to do is just try to try to get this to where it just the meniscus just sits proud of the surface. Without overfilling, hopefully. Now you can use your stick to kind of dribble it in uh, areas that are hard to pour. Yeah, I think you see the these down here, that's the reflection from the lights on the ceiling. So I'm going to hit this with a torch just to pop the air bubbles. Now it's been <clears throat> just shy of 30 minutes since I started mixing the, uh, or pouring the epoxy together. So I'm still, still quite workable. I, I can give this a little more time, uh, but uh, what I like to do somewhere around this point is just take my uh, a sandwich stick and you, I don't know whether the camera will pick this up. I'll tell you what, why don't I zoom in on the one that I, that is approximately centered, the one that's 
not upside down to you. And you can see some texture from the green pigment. And you can take your stick and swirl this around trying to, to get even more texture. And what I'm trying to do here is get this to look kind of like the feathers. And I want to stay away from the black as much as I can. I don't necessarily want that smearing around. And I'll do that for all of these. What I'm going to be doing now is get this feather area and the tail feathers and the tips of the wings with silver because that's a little darker than the breast feathers. And the way I'm going to do this is just put a minuscule amount on the tip of this X-Acto knife. You don't want too much because this has a tendency to go all over. And I'm just going to Take this uh, toothpick, just knock it off in there. And right now the powder is just sitting on the surface, and that's okay. I always get stuff where I don't want it, but that's okay. And I'm just going to start dabbing this in and trying to mix it locally within the epoxy. You don't want any clumps. You don't want any air bubbles either. If it clumps and it's on the surface, that's okay. Then you can you can get rid of that. Drag it out to the tips. Let me get the wings. You never really know how this is going to turn out because when I mill this down it will be the depth that I see and not what's necessarily on the surface. And I can tell this is epoxy thickening up, which is perfect. That's kind of what I want, but it will still level. Because now I can take the tip of this toothpick, start getting me some uh, things that kind of look like feathers, hopefully. And I can drag them either way. I'm running out of time. I probably shouldn't have done six at one time, but I did, so it's too late now. I'm going to take the pearl white, and I'm going to put some of that like I did before, except I'm going to put it in the breast area.
tell this is really thickening up fast, so I better hurry up here. moving sort of the direction of the feathers in my photo. Okay, the next color will be the red russet for the, I don't think I mentioned it, but, but this is for a ruby-throated hummingbird, which is very common in the area that I live. So I'm going to put some red russet. Okay, and now I'm not done making a mess because now I'm going to go back to my black epoxy, which is what's left of it, is fairly thick. And I'm going to put, try to plant one right where the eye needs to go. And I'm just going to bury it to the bottom a couple of times, trying to force that black for the eye. I'm not going to be overly concerned about mixing colors here. Now I'm going to, my photo actually has a, one of the foot, one of the feet, kind of right there in the tail, just a little bit of one, so I'm going to try to get that. effective that's going to be, but I'll try. Okay, I think I'm done for making a mess uh, on this one, so uh, this particular epoxy, I get the best results when I mill it. Um, I leave it cure for two days. And then, uh, then I'll sand it, and hopefully I'll get the results that I want. So I'll pick this up uh, in a couple of days and see how the see how the artwork turned out. For you it will be seconds, for me it will be days. Okay, so it's been uh, just shy of two full days and uh, the epoxy's cure. The reason I wait this long for this uh, Lumalite uh, Amazing Clearcast epoxy is because I've tried this after letting it cure for 24 hours. Perhaps it was the temperature in my shop, so it wasn't quite as cured because it was the winter time. Uh, but it's a lot warmer here in the summer, and I've actually had this particular design actually peel out of the cavity when I uh, uh, milled it on the CNC. Okay, so this took 8 minutes, 17, second, 17 seconds to uh, finish the lid, uh, 150 inches per minute, 18,000 RPM. Now to sand this, I'm not going to show the sanding, I'm just going to describe what I do. I'm, I use the Rotex RO90, an interface pad, And this, this pad seen better days. It's kind of split there. And I'm going to go through the progression of grits. And I'm going to start with 60 grit and 80 grit in Rotex mode. 
Then I will switch to random orbit mode and go 120, 180, 220, and 320 grit. Then I will go and uh, finish up the, the sides and the tops of the boxes and then this will be ready for finish. And it won't take me long to do that. And I won't show that, but I'll show the finished product. I also had one box kind of standing by. Uh, this is uh, leopard wood, same design, and uh, we'll, we'll just see how all of these turn out. I tried to use these same techniques on all of them, and I've been progressing with my adding more colors as, as we do this, and I, th and I think I'm close to what I want to see. But obviously none of these are identical, uh, which kind of adds to the uniqueness of it. So again, I'm not an artist, but uh, let me finish sanding this up and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so the box lids are finished. I just have some um, minor touch-up to do on the, or finishing work to do on the, uh, the bottoms. I need to apply felt pads and also just take the uh, protective covering off the fabric on the bottom. Overall, I'm happy with the results. Uh, let me see if I find one here. This is how my coloring technique worked. It doesn't emulate what actually exists in nature, but it's a lot closer than a solid color. <laughs> There's, uh, after experiencing this, this is the first time I've tried dabbing in the black epoxy for the eyes and the feet. And uh, I got blurry results you know, because you just really have no crispness control once you once you dip that into the epoxy it becomes blurred too whereas if you look at the photograph the feet and eyes are fairly have fairly sharp lines between that and the color underneath it so I think in the future the change I would make on this is to once that first uh, epoxy pours cured I'll leave that cure a couple of days then come back and mill out for the feet and the eyes and then just pour black over that. Then continue the process with milling the dough. Uh, overall, I'm happy with it though, and I haven't seen this particular technique using a solid pigment uh, on epoxy pours. So if you, if you have a subject that you want to inlay with, with blurred lines as opposed to, say, a sharp line, here's an example of one with sharp lines. This is a butterfly. And I've noticed that the butterflies that I've seen tend to have sharp lines between the differences in colors, whereas bird feathers are not like that. So anyway, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And I will be attending the IWF in Atlanta uh, in August. So if you want to see, I think I'm going to drop a couple of boxes by uh, the Hoffman USA booth. I'll give them to them, and uh, it'll be one of these plus another, and I'll just, uh, I'll let Hoffman decide what they want to do with them. I don't know, maybe they'll have a drawing. I'll leave that up to Marcus. But anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one.